In mathematics, non-Euclidean geometry consists of two geometries based on axioms closely related to those specifying Euclidean geometry. As Euclidean geometry lies at the intersection of metric geometry and affine geometry, non-Euclidean geometry arises when either the metric requirement is relaxed, or the parallel postulate is replaced with an alternative one. In the latter case one obtains hyperbolic geometry and elliptic geometry, the traditional non-Euclidean geometries. When the metric requirement is relaxed, then there are affine planes associated with the planar algebras which give rise to kinematic geometries that have also been called non-Euclidean geometry. The essential difference between the metric geometries is the nature of parallel lines. Euclid's fifth postulate, the parallel postulate, is equivalent to Playfair's postulate, which states that, within a two-dimensional plane, for any given line and a point A, which is not on, there is exactly one line through A that does not intersect. In hyperbolic geometry, by contrast, there are infinitely many lines through A not intersecting, while in elliptic geometry, any line through A intersects. Another way to describe the differences between these geometries is to consider two straight lines indefinitely extended in a two-dimensional plane that are both perpendicular to a third line. In Euclidean geometry, the lines remain at a constant distance from each other meaning that a line drawn perpendicular to one line at any point will intersect the other line and the length of the line segment joining the points of intersection remains constant and are known as parallels. In hyperbolic geometry, they curve away from each other, increasing in distance as one moves further from the points of intersection with the common perpendicular, these lines are often called ultraparallels. In elliptic geometry, the lines curve toward each other and intersect. History Background Euclidean geometry, named after the Greek mathematician Euclid, includes some of the oldest known mathematics, and geometries that deviated from this were not widely accepted as legitimate until the 19th century. The debate that eventually led to the discovery of the non-Euclidean geometries began almost as soon as Euclid's work Elements was written. In the Elements, Euclid began with a limited number of assumptions 23 definitions, 5 common notions, and 5 postulates and sought to prove all the other results propositions in the work. The most notorious of the postulates is often referred to as Euclid's fifth postulate, or simply the parallel postulate, which in Euclid's original formulation is if a straight line falls on two straight lines in such a manner that the interior angles on the same side are together less than two right angles, then the straight lines, if produced indefinitely, meet on that side on which are the angles less than the two right angles. Other mathematicians have devised simpler forms of this property. Regardless of the form of the postulate, however, it consistently appears to be more complicated than Euclid's other postulates. 1. To draw a straight line from any point to any point. 2. To produce extend a finite straight line continuously in a straight line. 3. To describe a circle with any center and distance radius. 4. That all right angles are equal to one another. For at least a thousand years, geometers were troubled by the disparate complexity of the fifth postulate, and believed it could be proved as a theorem from the other four. Many attempted to find a proof by contradiction, including Ibn al-Haytham al 11th century, Omar Khayyam 12th century, Nasir al-Din al-Tusi 13th century, and Giovanni Girolamo Sicari 18th century. The theorems of Ibn al-Haytham, Khayyam and al-Tusi on quadrilaterals, including the Lambert quadrilateral and Sicari quadrilateral, were the first few theorems of the hyperbolic and the elliptic geometries. These theorems along with their alternative postulates, such as Playfair's axiom, played an important role in the later development of non-Euclidean geometry. These early attempts at challenging the fifth postulate had a considerable influence on its development among later European geometers, including Whitello, Levi ben Gerson, Alfonso, John Wallace and Sicari. All of these early attempts made at trying to formulate non-Euclidean geometry however provided flawed proofs of the parallel postulate, containing assumptions that were essentially equivalent to the parallel postulate. These early attempts did, however, provide some early properties of the hyperbolic and elliptic geometries. Khayyam, for example, tried to derive it from an equivalent postulate he formulated from the principles of the philosopher, Aristotle. 
two convergent straight lines intersect and it is impossible for two convergent straight lines to diverge in the direction in which they converge." Kayam then considered the three cases right, obtuse, and acute that the summit angles of a Sakari quadrilateral can take and after proving a number of theorems about them, he correctly refuted the obtuse and acute cases based on his postulate and hence derived the classic postulate of Euclid which he didn't realize was equivalent to his own postulate. Another example is Al Tusi's son, Sadr al Din, sometimes known as Pseudo Tusi, who wrote a book on the subject in 1298, based on Al Tusi's later thoughts, which presented another hypothesis equivalent to the parallel postulate. He essentially revised both the Euclidean system of axioms and postulates and the proofs of many propositions from the elements. His work was published in Rome in 1594 and was studied by European geometers, including Sicari, who criticized this work as well as that of Wallace Giordano Vitali, in his book Euclid Restituo, 1680, 1686, used the Sicari quadrilateral to prove that if three points are equidistant on the base AB and the summit CD, then AB and CD are everywhere equidistant. In a work titled Euclides ab omni navo vindicatus Euclid freed from all flaws, published in 1733, Sicari quickly discarded elliptic geometry as a possibility some others of Euclid's axioms must be modified for elliptic geometry to work and set to work proving a great number of results in hyperbolic geometry. He finally reached a point where he believed that his results demonstrated the impossibility of hyperbolic geometry. His claim seems to have been based on Euclidean presuppositions, because no logical contradiction was present. In this attempt to prove Euclidean geometry he instead unintentionally discovered a new viable geometry, but did not realize it. In 1766 Johann Lambert wrote, but did not publish, Theory der Parallelinien in which he attempted, as Sicari did, to prove the fifth postulate. He worked with a figure that today we call a Lambert quadrilateral, a quadrilateral with three right angles can be considered half of a Sicari quadrilateral. He quickly eliminated the possibility that the fourth angle is obtuse, as had Sicari and Kayam, and then proceeded to prove many theorems under the assumption of an acute angle. Unlike Sicari, he never felt that he had reached a contradiction with this assumption. He had proved the non-Euclidean result that the sum of the angles in a triangle increases as the area of the triangle decreases, and this led him to speculate on the possibility of a model of the acute case on a sphere of imaginary radius. He did not carry this idea any further, at this time it was widely believed that the universe worked according to the principles of Euclidean geometry. Topic. Discovery of non-Euclidean geometry The beginning of the 19th century would finally witness decisive steps in the creation of non-Euclidean geometry. Circa 1813, Carl Friedrich Gauss and independently around 1818, the German professor of law Ferdinand Karl Schweikert had the germinal ideas of non-Euclidean geometry worked out, but neither published any results. Schweikert's nephew Franz Torinus did publish important results of hyperbolic trigonometry in two papers in 1825 and 1826, yet while admitting the internal consistency of hyperbolic geometry, he still believed in the special role of Euclidean geometry. Then, around 1830, the Hungarian mathematician Janos Balyai and the Russian mathematician Nikolai Ivanovich Lobachevsky separately published treatises on hyperbolic geometry. Consequently, hyperbolic geometry is called Balyai Lobachevskian geometry, as both mathematicians, independent of each other, are the basic authors of non Euclidean geometry. Gauss mentioned to Balyai's father, when shown the younger Balyai's work, that he had developed such a geometry several years before, though he did not publish. While Lobachevsky created a non Euclidean geometry by negating the parallel postulate, Balyai worked out a geometry where both the Euclidean and the hyperbolic geometry are possible depending on a parameter k. Balyai ends his work by mentioning that it is not possible to decide through mathematical reasoning alone if the geometry of the physical universe is Euclidean or non Euclidean. This is a task for the physical sciences. Bernhard Riemann, in a famous lecture in 1854, founded the field of Riemannian geometry, discussing in particular the ideas now called manifolds, Riemannian metric, and curvature. He constructed an infinite family of geometries which are not Euclidean by giving a formula for a family of Riemannian metrics on the unit ball in Euclidean space. 
The simplest of these is called elliptic geometry and it is considered to be a non Euclidean geometry due to its lack of parallel lines. By formulating the geometry in terms of a curvature tensor, Riemann allowed non Euclidean geometry to be applied to higher dimensions. Terminology It was Gauss who coined the term, non Euclidean geometry. He was referring to his own work which today we call hyperbolic geometry. Several modern authors still consider «non-Euclidean geometry» and «hyperbolic geometry» to be synonyms. Arthur Cayley noted that distance between points inside a conic could be defined in terms of logarithm and the projective cross-ratio function. The method has become called the Cayley-Klein metric because Felix Klein exploited it to describe the non-Euclidean geometries in articles in 1871 and 73 and later in book form. The Cayley-Klein metrics provided working models of hyperbolic and elliptic metric geometries, as well as Euclidean geometry. Klein is responsible for the terms hyperbolic and elliptic. In his system he called Euclidean geometry parabolic a term which generally fell out of use. His influence has led to the current usage of the term non-Euclidean geometry to mean either hyperbolic or elliptic geometry. There are some mathematicians who would extend the list of geometries that should be called non-Euclidean in various ways. <laughs> Axiomatic basis of non-Euclidean geometry Euclidean geometry can be axiomatically described in several ways. Unfortunately, Euclid's original system of five postulates axioms is not one of these as his proofs relied on several unstated assumptions which should also have been taken as axioms. Hilbert's system consisting of 20 axioms most closely follows the approach of Euclid and provides the justification for all of Euclid's proofs. Other systems, using different sets of undefined terms obtain the same geometry by different paths. In all approaches, however, there is an axiom which is logically equivalent to Euclid's fifth postulate, the parallel postulate. Hilbert uses the Playfair axiom form, while Birkhoff, for instance, uses the axiom which says that there exists a pair of similar but not congruent triangles. In any of these systems, removal of the one axiom which is equivalent to the parallel postulate, in whatever form it takes, and leaving all the other axioms intact, produces absolute geometry. As the first 28 propositions of Euclid in the elements do not require the use of the parallel postulate or anything equivalent to it, they are all true statements in absolute geometry. To obtain a non-Euclidean geometry, the parallel postulate or its equivalent must be replaced by its negation. Negating the Playfair's axiom form, since it is a compound statement, there exists one and only one, can be done in two ways. Either there will exist more than one line through the point parallel to the given line or there will exist no lines through the point parallel to the given line. In the first case, replacing the parallel postulate or its equivalent with the statement, in a plane, given a point P and a line not passing through P, there exist two lines through P which do not meet, and keeping all the other axioms, yields hyperbolic geometry. The second case is not dealt with as easily. Simply replacing the parallel postulate with the statement, in a plane, given a point P and a line not passing through P, all the lines through P meet, does not give a consistent set of axioms. This follows since parallel lines exist in absolute geometry, but this statement says that there are no parallel lines. This problem was known in a different guise to Kayam, Sakari and Lambert and was the basis for their rejecting what was known as the obtuse angle case. In order to obtain a consistent set of axioms which includes this axiom about having no parallel lines, some of the other axioms must be tweaked. The adjustments to be made depend upon the axiom system being used. Among others these tweaks will have the effect of modifying Euclid's second postulate from the statement that line segments can be extended indefinitely to the statement that lines are unbounded. Riemann's elliptic geometry emerges as the most natural geometry satisfying this axiom. Topic. Models of non-Euclidean geometry Two-dimensional Euclidean geometry is modeled by our notion of a flat plane. Topic. Elliptic geometry 
The simplest model for elliptic geometry is a sphere, where lines are great circles, such as the equator or the meridians on a globe, and points opposite each other called antipodal points are identified considered to be the same. This is also one of the standard models of the real projective plane. The difference is that as a model of elliptic geometry a metric is introduced permitting the measurement of lengths and angles, while as a model of the projective plane there is no such metric. In the elliptic model, for any given line and a point A, which is not on, all lines through A will intersect. Topic. Hyperbolic geometry Even after the work of Lobachevsky, Gauss, and Balyai, the question remained. Does such a model exist for hyperbolic geometry? The model for hyperbolic geometry was answered by Eugenio Beltrami, in 1868, who first showed that a surface called the pseudosphere has the appropriate curvature to model a portion of hyperbolic space and in a second paper in the same year, defined the Klein model which models the entirety of hyperbolic space, and used this to show that Euclidean geometry and hyperbolic geometry were equiconsistent so that hyperbolic geometry was logically consistent if and only if Euclidean geometry was. The reverse implication follows from the horosphere model of Euclidean geometry. In the hyperbolic model, within a two-dimensional plane, for any given line and a point A, which is not on, there are infinitely many lines through A that do not intersect. In these models the concepts of non-Euclidean geometries are being represented by Euclidean objects in a Euclidean setting. This introduces a perceptual distortion wherein the straight lines of the non-Euclidean geometry are being represented by Euclidean curves which visually bend. This bending is not a property of the non-Euclidean lines, only an artifice of the way they are being represented. Three-dimensional non-Euclidean geometry In three dimensions, there are eight models of geometries. There are Euclidean, elliptic, and hyperbolic geometries, as in the two-dimensional case, mixed geometries that are partially Euclidean and partially hyperbolic or spherical, twisted versions of the mixed geometries, and one unusual geometry that is completely anisotropic i.e. every direction behaves differently. Topic. Uncommon properties Euclidean and non-Euclidean geometries naturally have many similar properties, namely those which do not depend upon the nature of parallelism. This commonality is the subject of absolute geometry also called neutral geometry. However, the properties which distinguish one geometry from the others are the ones which have historically received the most attention. Besides the behavior of lines with respect to a common perpendicular, mentioned in the introduction, we also have the following. A Lambert quadrilateral is a quadrilateral which has three right angles. The fourth angle of a Lambert quadrilateral is acute if the geometry is hyperbolic, a right angle if the geometry is Euclidean or obtuse if the geometry is elliptic. Consequently, rectangles exist a statement equivalent to the parallel postulate only in Euclidean geometry. A Sakari quadrilateral is a quadrilateral which has two sides of equal length, both perpendicular to a side called the base. The other two angles of a Sakari quadrilateral are called the summit angles and they have equal measure. The summit angles of a Sakari quadrilateral are acute if the geometry is hyperbolic, right angles if the geometry is Euclidean and obtuse angles if the geometry is elliptic. The sum of the measures of the angles of any triangle is less than 180 degrees if the geometry is hyperbolic, equal to 180 degrees if the geometry is Euclidean, and greater than 180 degrees if the geometry is elliptic. The defect of a triangle is the numerical value 180 degrees sum of the measures of the angles of the triangle. This result may also be stated as, the defect of triangles in hyperbolic geometry is positive, the defect of triangles in Euclidean geometry is zero, and the defect of triangles in elliptic geometry is negative. Topic. Importance Before the models of a non-Euclidean plane were presented by Beltrami, Klein, and Poincaré, Euclidean geometry stood unchallenged as the mathematical model of space. Furthermore, since the substance of the subject in synthetic geometry was a chief exhibit of rationality, the Euclidean point of view represented absolute authority. 
The discovery of the non-Euclidean geometries had a ripple effect which went far beyond the boundaries of mathematics and science. The philosopher Immanuel Kant's treatment of human knowledge had a special role for geometry. It was his prime example of synthetic a priori knowledge, not derived from the senses nor deduced through logic. Our knowledge of space was a truth that we were born with. Unfortunately for Kant, his concept of this unalterably true geometry was Euclidean. Theology was also affected by the change from absolute truth to relative truth in the way that mathematics is related to the world around it, that was a result of this paradigm shift. Non Euclidean geometry is an example of a scientific revolution in the history of science, in which mathematicians and scientists changed the way they viewed their subjects. Some geometers called Lobachevsky the Copernicus of geometry. Due to the revolutionary character of his work, the existence of non-Euclidean geometries impacted the intellectual life of Victorian England in many ways and in particular was one of the leading factors that caused a re-examination of the teaching of geometry based on Euclid's elements. This curriculum issue was hotly debated at the time and was even the subject of a book, Euclid and His Modern Rivals, written by Charles Lutwidge Dodgson better known as Lewis Carroll, the author of Alice in Wonderland. Topic. Planar algebras In analytic geometry a plane is described with Cartesian coordinates, c topic. x, y, x, y element of. The points are sometimes identified with complex numbers z. x plus y epsilon where epsilon 2 element of minus 1, 0, 1. The Euclidean plane corresponds to the case epsilon 2 equals minus 1 since the modulus of z is given by z z equals x plus y e x minus y e equals x 2 plus y 2 Display style z z caret ast equals x plus y epsilon x y epsilon equals x caret two plus y caret two, and this quantity is the square of the Euclidean distance between z and the origin. For instance, z z z asterisk equals one is the unit circle. For planar algebra, non-Euclidean geometry arises in the other cases. When epsilon 2 equals plus 1, then z is a split complex number and conventionally j replaces epsilon. Then z z equals x plus y j x minus y j equals x 2 minus y 2 display style z z caret ast equals x plus y math bf j x y math bf j equals x caret 2 y caret 2 and z z z asterisk equals 1 is the unit hyperbola when epsilon 2 equals 0 then z is a dual number this approach to non euclidean geometry explains the non euclidean angles the parameters of slope in the dual number plane and hyperbolic angle in the split complex plane correspond to angle in euclidean geometry indeed they each arise in polar decomposition of a complex number z topic <laughs> kinematic geometries Hyperbolic geometry found an application in kinematics with the physical cosmology introduced by Hermann Minkowski in 1908. Minkowski introduced terms like world line and proper time into mathematical physics. He realized that the submanifold, of events one moment of proper time into the future, could be considered a hyperbolic space of three dimensions. Already in the 1890s Alexander McFarlane was charting this submanifold through his algebra of physics and hyperbolic quaternions, though McFarlane did not use cosmological language as Minkowski did in 1908. The relevant structure is now called the hyperboloid model of hyperbolic geometry. The non-Euclidean planar algebras support kinematic geometries in the plane. For instance, the split complex number z equals eaj can represent a spacetime event one moment into the future of a frame of reference of rapidity a. 
Furthermore, multiplication by z amounts to a Lorentz boost mapping the frame with rapidity 0 to that with rapidity a. Kinematic study makes use of the dual numbers z equals x plus y e, e2 equals 0, display style z equals x plus y epsilon, quad epsilon caret 2 equals 0, to represent the classical description of motion in absolute time and space. The equations x equals x plus v t, t equals t, display style x caret prime equals x plus v t, quad t caret prime equals t are equivalent to a shear mapping in linear algebra, x t equals equals 1 v o 1 x t display style begin p matrix x t end p matrix equals begin p matrix 1 and v 0 and 1 end p matrix begin p matrix x t end p matrix with dual numbers the mapping is t plus x e equals 1 plus v e t plus x e equals t plus x plus v t e display style t caret prime plus x caret prime epsilon equals 1 plus v epsilon t plus x epsilon equals t plus x plus v t epsilon Another view of special relativity as a non-Euclidean geometry was advanced by E. B. Wilson and Gilbert Lewis in Proceedings of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 1912. They revamped the analytic geometry implicit in the split complex number algebra into synthetic geometry of premises and deductions. Topic. Fiction Non-Euclidean geometry often makes appearances in works of science fiction and fantasy. In 1895 H. G. Wells published the short story, The Remarkable Case of Davidson's Eyes. To appreciate this story one should know how antipodal points on a sphere are identified in a model of the elliptic plane. In the story, in the midst of a thunderstorm, Sidney Davidson sees waves and a remarkably neat schooner while working in an electrical laboratory at Harlow Technical College. At the story's close, Davidson proves to have witnessed HMS. Fulmer off Antipodes Island. Non-Euclidean geometry is sometimes connected with the influence of the 20th-century horror fiction writer H. P. Lovecraft. In his works, many unnatural things follow their own unique laws of geometry. In Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos, the sunken city of Relia is characterized by its non-Euclidean geometry. It is heavily implied this is achieved as a side effect of not following the natural laws of this universe rather than simply using an alternate geometric model, as the sheer innate wrongness of it is said to be capable of driving those who look upon it insane. The main character in Robert Persig's Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance mentioned Riemannian geometry on multiple occasions. In The Brothers Karamazov, Dostoevsky discusses non-Euclidean geometry through his main character Ivan. Christopher Priest's novel Inverted World describes the struggle of living on a planet with the form of a rotating pseudosphere. Robert Heinlein's The Number of the Beast utilizes non-Euclidean geometry to explain instantaneous transport through space and time and between parallel and fictional universes. Alexander Bruce's antechamber uses non-Euclidean geometry to create a minimal, Escher-like world, where geometry and space follow unfamiliar rules. Xeno Rogue's Hyperrogue is a roguelike game set on the hyperbolic plane, allowing the player to experience many properties of this geometry. Many mechanics, quests, and locations are strongly dependent on the features of hyperbolic geometry. In the Renegade Legion science fiction setting for FASA's wargame, role-playing game and fiction, faster than light travel and communications is possible through the use of Sheho's polydimensional non-Euclidean geometry, published sometime in the middle of the 22nd century. In Ian Stewart's Flatterland the protagonist Victoria Line visits all kinds of non-Euclidean worlds. In Jean-Pierre Petit's Here's Looking at Euclid and Not Looking at Euclid, Archibald Higgins stumbles upon spherical geometry. 
On the SCP Foundation wiki, there are some contained objects SCPs involving non-Euclidean geometries, such as SCP-1898 construction sets that allow the user to create their own non-Euclidean geometries, SCP-419 a window to an urban landscape with non-Euclidean geometries, and SCP-2282 a mammal, similar to a goat, whose digestive tract is an array of non-Euclidean distortions. See also Hyperbolic space Lennart sphere Projective geometry Notes References Acampo, Norbert and Papadopoulos, Athenaeus, 2012 Notes on Hyperbolic Geometry, in, Strasbourg Master Class on Geometry, pp. 1–182, Irma Lectures in Mathematics and Theoretical Physics, Vol. 18, Zurich, European Mathematical Society EMS, 461 pages, ISBN 978-3-03719-105-7, doi, 10.4171-105. Anderson, James W. Hyperbolic Geometry, 2nd edition, Springer, 2005 Beltrami, Eugenio Teoria Fondamental degli Spazi di Curvatura Costanti, Annali, D. Matt, Esser 2-2 1868, 232-255 Blumenthal, Leonard M. 1980, A Modern View of Geometry, New York, Dover, ISBN 0-486-63962-2 Carroll, Lewis Euclid and His Modern Rivals, New York, Barnes & Noble, 2009 reprint ISBN 978-1-4351-2348-9 HSM Coxeter Non-Euclidean Geometry, University of Toronto Press, reissued 1998 by Mathematical Association of America, ISBN 0-88385-522-4 Faber, Richard L. 1983, Foundations of Euclidean and Non-Euclidean Geometry, New York, Marcel Decker, ISBN 0-8247-1748-1 Jeremy Gray 1989, Ideas of Space, Euclidean, Non-Euclidean, and Relativistic, 2nd edition, Clarendon Press Greenberg, Marvin J. Euclidean and Non-Euclidean Geometries, Development and History, 4th ed., New York, W. H. Freeman, 2007. ISBN 0-7167-9948-0 Morris Klein 1972, Mathematical Thought from Ancient to Modern Times, Chapter 36 Non-Euclidean Geometry, pp. 861-81, Oxford University Press. Bernard H. Lavenda, 2012. A New Perspective on Relativity, An Odyssey in Non-Euclidean Geometries. World Scientific, pp. 696, ISBN 9789814340489. Nikolai Lobachevsky Pangeometry, Translator and Editor, A. Papadopoulos, Heritage of European Mathematics Series, Vol. 4, European Mathematical Society. Manning, Henry Parker 1963, Introductory Non-Euclidean Geometry, New York, Dover Meshkowski, Herbert 1964, Non-Euclidean Geometry, New York, Academic Press Milner, John W. 1982, Hyperbolic Geometry, The First 150 Years, Bull. Amer. Math. SOC, NS Vol. 6, No. 1, pp. 9-24. Richards, Joan L. 1988, Mathematical Visions, The Pursuit of Geometry in Victorian England, Boston, Academic Press, ISBN 0-12-587445-6 Smart, James R. 1997, Modern Geometries 5th ed., Pacific Grove, Brooks, Cole, ISBN 0-534-35188-3 Stewart, Ian Flatterland. New York, Perseus Publishing, 2001. ISBN 0-7382-0675-X Softcover John Stilwell 1996 Sources of Hyperbolic Geometry, American Mathematical Society ISBN 0-8218-0529-0
Trudeau, Richard J. 1987, the Non-Euclidean Revolution, Boston, Berkhauser, ISBN 0-8176-3311-1 a. Papadopoulos et Guillaume Terre, 2014. La théorie des parallèles de Johann Heinrich Lambert, critical edition of Lambert's memoir with a French translation, with historical and mathematical notes and commentaries. Aid. Blanchard, Call. Sciences dans la histoire, Paris. ISBN 978-2-85367-266-5. Topic. External links. Roberto Benola Non-Euclidean Geometry, Open Court, Chicago. MacTutor Archive article on Non-Euclidean Geometry Non-Euclidean Geometry at PlanetMath.org Non-Euclidean Geometries from Encyclopedia of Math of European Mathematical Society and Springer Science Plus Business Media Synthetic Spacetime, a digest of the axioms used, and theorems proved, by Wilson and Lewis. Archived by website